man, oh man, I did not expect to be making another video for this week. I already have videos scheduled out for every day for the rest of the week that I am posting this, but this will be a double upload day because Premiere has updated to 12.0.1, which is for the CC 2018 version. And they have some new features here, which you can view on the Adobe Help site or Premiere Bro has a quick outline. But one that I totally skipped over, which is a huge deal and I've brought up on the channel in the past, is the support for variable frame rate. Now this is something that people have been fighting for for years. Uh, as far back as 2012, I've seen threads and I'm sure there's ones further than that. And finally, they just announced that it is technically working in the new Premiere update. So I'm going to show you how that works. There are some other features in the update, most of which I'm not going to mess with ever myself or really know how to explain. So I'll link you this Premiere Bro post, or I guess just the Adobe Help site. Uh, but for those of you who are unaware, uh, variable frame rate means that the frame rate of your video changes over time. This is super common for smartphone video, webcam video, and NVIDIA Shadowplay gameplay recordings. As in order to maintain performance and not to stop the recording, it just kind of drops frames every now and then. So some of the video might be a solid 30 FPS, but then sometimes it'll, you know, be 15 FPS or 25 or whatever. And it varies over time. And this in Premiere has historically caused audio desync because it assumes a constant frame rate. So eventually, you know, it counts every individual frame. So eventually you start losing frames and your audio no longer matches with the video. And now they have implemented tools to help deal with this for the very first time. I will say that since this is for the very first time, it is not perfect. Uh, there are reports of people saying their stuff is still desynced. We're going to do some tests here. This is my first impressions. They are going to keep working on it. They are looking for samples of clips that uh, are not working for VFR adaptation. So you can send those in and I'll have that thread in the description down below. Uh, but this is a big deal. Previously, I've made videos about how you can use FFmpeg or Handbrake to lock your video's frame rate so that you can edit in Premiere. In theory, this means you don't have to. So I have collected some video files here that, in theory, would get the audio desync as a result of variable frame rate. I don't know that they actually will, so we'll see if it's better. But in theory, historically, the way these report have always gotten desync at some point. So one is a smartphone video. You can see here it's reported that it's 26.56 FPS. Here is an easy sign that it has variable frame rate is if especially Windows detects a non-standard frame rate. So you have 2997, 30, 5994, 60, 23.976, and 24 are your standard frame rates. And those 97 and 94 for 29 and 59 are very important. Those are the specific frame rates to mean that it's correct. Uh, for example, over here we have 29.99. That is not correct for 30. That means something's up. That is not correct. Then we have 58.39 and 59.42. It is not 59.42, it is 59.94, which means this likely has some variation. And pulling up these files in Media Info, you can see again it reports a slightly different frame rate from what uh, Explorer even reports. And we'll pull up this one. 58.394. So typically this means it's a variable frame rate file and historically in Premiere it desyncs. So I've added them to my bin here and if we view the properties you can still see here it does say those weird frame rates in Premiere which is a sign that we're working with the correct files. Now supposedly if we right click yeah so supposedly if we right click and go to properties you can see here variable frame rate detected. It detects it. It knows that this is happening. Uh, we'll check all of these over here. On the main monitor, variable frame rate detected, my bad. So you can see here in this window, every single one, that we'll go ahead and check this, the last one here, all of them say variable frame rate detected, which is showing that Premiere is detecting these settings accordingly. Now, I will say if you plan on editing these clips, if you've already added them to a project and you just want to fix your project to get rid of the audio desync, you will need to delete your cache files, and probably your scratch files. And not just by cleaning them from Adobe, they say you need to physically delete the, delete the files. So for cache, if you go to preferences, or edit preferences, and then media cache, you can get the directory that your files are at. So for example, mine is h slash media cache. And so I would need to physically go to that direct directory in Explorer or Finder or whatever, and just select all of these and hit delete. 
select all of these, hit delete. And same thing for the scratch folder. If you have that set up, mine's on the same drive, H scratch right there, delete all of those and let Premiere regenerate them after you've updated to 12.0.1. That is super important or it will still have the old interpretation of your files. Once you've done that, now you can double click your file in your bin to open it up in the source monitor or you can click it on your timeline if you've already added it here. And in the master clip effect controls panel over here, you now have an option for variable frame rate. You have two options. One is to preserve audio sync, which means it's going to add in or drop frames as needed to basically lock it to a static frame rate to keep your audio in sync with the file or smooth video motion, which is going to allow the motion to look smoother as it would have normally been interpreted before mostly, uh, but you're going to risk audio desync still. The help article does explain here that if you do use a proxy workflow or a transcode workflow, you need to transcode the VFR files to a locked static fr constant frame rate before editing. It's just the best way to go right now anyway. Uh, so that is important. If you're using proxies, go ahead and do the FFmpeg or Handbrake or however you normally lock it anyway, just to be safe. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a new sequence. And I'm doing this as a new sequence instead of from the file because we want to specifically test this against 60 FPS. So we're going to make this 4096 by 2160, 60 FPS or 5994. Um, and we're going to drag this variable frame rate file in here. Actually, it's a 3840, whatever. Resolution didn't matter here. We just care about frame rate. Now, in the master clip effects, we have preserve audio sync on, which means we should be able to check shots being fired, and they should match up. That is perfectly in sync. Just for kicks, let's see how it looks with smooth video motion on. Whoa, you can already see the frame exactly where that frame was changed. So let's watch that again. This, I honestly, I pulled so many clips because I wasn't sure I would have a good example that actually worked. But this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is exactly what I was going for. It's completely out of sync. This is what the file normally looked like. This is from the Destiny 2 beta. I never wound up editing footage because it was out of sync and I didn't feel like transcoding. This is it. Uh, I will play it back again. Completely out of sync. Doesn't doesn't work at all. But then if we go in and turn on that preserve audio sync one more time. Yes, I have terrible aim. That was the beta. Whatever. Doesn't matter. It's in sync. Perfect. All right, we're going to pull in another clip. We've got another 60 FPS Overwatch footage. We'll see if we can find a spot right here. Sombra online. Go. Is that all you've got? <laughs> that that is in sync where it's supposed to be. I am super impressed. Like I said, there have been people who said their footage isn't affected. I've got both shadow play and some phone footage and some other footage, and so far, it's working out great. So make sure you've updated in the Creative Cloud app to the latest version, which is 12.0.1 at the time of recording. Make sure you delete your cache and scratch files and make sure the master clip settings is set to preserve audio sync. Pretty freaking cool. This is huge. This may not seem like a big deal, but this has been huge for editors who have, I think GoPro footage as well uh, has variable frame rate sometimes or one of those cameras that people use a lot. Like this has been a big deal. And there was like, uh, let me pull that thread back up. There was like 16 pages when I replied to this post and like I said I've seen threads going back to 2012 of just people getting furious that Premiere doesn't support it so I am super stoked so hope hope this video was helpful for you if it was smash that like button get subscribed for more awesome tech tips and apparently a bajillion different software updates since everyone's updating their software here in January and come check me out on patreon or whatever if you'd like and I'll see you in the next one this video is sponsored by viewers like you our videos would not be possible without the generosity of those of you who contribute to one of our fan funding options, be it DonorBox, Twitch subscriptions, direct contributions via PayPal, or Patreon. To join our inner circle and get behind-the-scenes looks at videos, 
Go to epostvox.com slash support to learn more, and join us on Discord at epostvox.com slash Discord. Thanks.